So, did you figure it out yet? What kind of a puzzle is this? Well, let's actually take a look and see. Anytime you're met with a novel looking puzzle, uh, I find it useful to kind of go through and organize our thoughts about what we might come across and what kind of strategies we might want to use with this. So taking a look at it, we can see that there's, well, it's kind of simple in terms of the different pieces. We see that there's two basic shapes. You've got this wine glass shape over here, and we've got this uh, corner looking piece over here too. Um, looking at it, it looks like every piece, although there's two kinds of pieces, every piece basically has a very specific kind of a look to it. Either the shape or the sticker pattern is unique. What that tells me is that there's no false equivocation with this puzzle. One piece cannot be substituted for another, nor can rotating a piece in one way be confused with rotating it another way. So there's no rotational equivalency and there's no translational equivalency. What I mean by that is that if you take a piece and rotate it, will it look the same when you rotate it? Is there symmetry in rotation? If there is symmetry in rotation, it means that you can have equivocation, you can have rotational uh, equivalency, which means that you might have it rotated 90 degrees or 180 degrees and you wouldn't know it. Translational equivalency is if you can substitute one piece for another and swap the two because they look exactly alike. Well, you don't see any of that here, so I know right off the bat I'm not going to deal with any fallacies of false equivocation. I'm not going to deal with any rotational equivocation or translational equivocation. So looking at how this moves, I can just kind of pick a random motion over here and you can see that I seem to be moving across an axis that's in the middle with one, two, three, four, five pieces. So five pieces are rotating here across a center that does not have a piece in it. So there's a hidden center over here. What's more, I can take a look and say if we can define this as a face, maybe it's a corner, who knows, but here's a face over here. Every time I have a juxtaposition of five of these, they join together in a center that rotates ab about that axis. So how many faces do I have? Well basically I don't have a center. Here's a face over here and here's a face over here too. So I've got two faces here and although this looks like an edge, if this is the center and this is a center um, over here, then I have also an invisible area here, an edge, that's supposed to join these two but I don't have an actual shown edge. So this is a puzzle without a center and without edges, because edges articulate to centers. And here's a center here, here's a center here, but there's no edge piece that's in between that, or any of them over here. The only thing I have is a piece over here that joins this center with this center with this center, as this part here is also, I think anyway, yeah, a juxtaposition of five pieces. So that would mean that this is a corner, because a corner piece articulates between three sides three faces, three centers, whereas an edge goes with two. So this is a corner. That means this is also a corner as it goes from this center. Now you can see that you've got this invisible edge over here. So this corner piece here joins these two centers and this center over here. So basically this tells me this is a corners only puzzle. So it's a face turner without, without a center, without edges, or hidden centers and hidden edges, that's all corners. Which means that this is the simplest of layers. Because the only kind of corners only puzzle would be one in which it's just two layers. So here's a side over here, here's a side over here, so let's count the sides. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we can turn it upside down and do the same thing, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So basically, this is a 12-sided puzzle. And although you can't see the shape here, what kind of a shape is 12 sides? It's a dodecahedron. And we seem to be moving at all the faces. So what I can tell by the organization is that this is a face turning dodecahedron consisting only of corners, no centers, and no edges. So face turning dodecahedron consisting of um, the lowest type layers or two layered face turning dodecahedron. Well, what is that kind of a puzzle? Well, let's see what this turns into. So let's start the process of solving this thing. Um, now I'm going to solve it as a face turning two layered 
dodecahedron, I suppose. And I'm going to take this maybe and line it up with this guy over here. So turn it here. Now let's see what shape this is going to turn into. Pow! Well, that looks perfect. So now I'm going to see what belongs here. Well, here's a green. So I'm going to match it up with the green here. Let's see what direction it goes. Turn. Now with the clues, you should have figured out what kind of puzzle this is. If not, that's okay. You'll figure it out by the end. Uh, not yet. Well, I see a yellow here and a yellow here, so I'm on the wrong side of, of the woods here. So I'm just going to plop this somewhere along in here. Turn, turn, and up you go. Okay, so that matches over here fine. We have this little cleft here. Yellows, here's red. So I'm going to place something here. This, this is going to be a side, and I'm missing two pieces. These pieces are fine. So this red one it looks like it'll make sense. I got a green here which can come up to here. So this little wine glass should be able to fall into place here. And pow. So now this is in. Lastly, I've got another green and red. See what I can find here. Green and red. Right over here. Green, red, and white, actually. Let's make sure I'm lined up for my movements. Turn this here. And... Oh, it's got to come over to here. Turn... Turn, and I gotta plop that in here and curse splat. Okay, so now I appear to have a side. These all move together. Now, now we can see how the side comes together, this whole side here. And uh, what does this look like? Well, we have corners here. It looks like we have we need corners over here. So this appears to be the side of what we've decided as a dodecahedron, yet it sounds like it's only the part of maybe an entire false side that wants to be a square. So now where do we go from here? Well, basically, if I have something that starts out as a corners only dodecahedron that appears to be in the shape of what's going to look like a square, well, a cubic transformation of a dodecahedron is, of course, a hexaminx. And a two-layer dodecahedron would be a kilominx. This is a kilominx over here. A face-turning dodecahedron, that's what the structure is over here. So this is a kilominx in hexaminx form, a kilohexaminx. So that is what this is going to end up looking like. So let's see where things go here. Um, as, as I'm to solve this as a dodecahedron, my next step will be to start filling in the corners that surround this all along the side. So this is the easiest one. I'll just put this wine glass in. Turn and splat. No problems. How about over here? Well, this guy. This is in the right place. It's just turned wrong. So I'm just going to move this around here. Still wrong. Move it up and around. This is more intuitive stuff. No algorithms. Not yet, anyway. I like this, but it's got to be over here. Just like that. Okay, now I've got to keep my perspective about me, because the more this is turning into a square, the more I'm going to think that that's the side. But this is the side here. Green, red, white, and yellow on each side here. So now we'll go, what goes over here? Well, it's going to be another corner piece with green. But green and white, so I'm going to find it over here. <clears throat> turn, turn. Belongs there, but not quite like that. Turn and turn. I'm just swinging around. Aha! So this is fine. So this is in, this is in, this is in. And I want to put, well, I guess this guy in. I think. Sure. So this is going to be yellow and green with a small green on top. 
Small green on top. Where are you? Small green on top. Right here. I said yellow. I'm an orange. Just seeing if you're awake. Because at this hour, I am not. Okay. I like this over here. It's just got to be turned in the correct way. And there it is. Okay. So this is in, this is in. Now I gotta turn this guy in, which looks to be this corner piece here. So I'm gonna do a R-I-D-I-R-D -I -I kind of a thing. Turning of this puzzle is great, and pow. So now I've gotta watch myself because I appear to have a shape emerging, a square shape, but that's not the face. I've always gotta remember this is the face over here. And if I lose my perspective, I'm gonna get lost, and that's the issue with this puzzle. So this was my first face. This is in, this is in. All of these are in over here. Now I want to put these guys in here too, since they articulate with that, these corners. So I need a yellow and whatever goes here. Well, so it's another wine glass. So yellow and orange. Wrap that around here. Needs to come into this space which I can make happen just like that. So that's good. Now what it needs to come into here is the other yellow wine glass, which is this. Turn, turn, and turn. I've got to put this in. Now well, let's see if I can't line this up better. Okay. Okay, I like it here, I just don't like the direction that it's in. So I'm just going to R-I-D-A-R-D it until splat. So now this is in. Um, once again, let's get our perspective about us. And we got to put this guy in here too. That might have been in there, but I might have accidentally taken it out. Turn. And I'm just gonna wheel this guy right into here. So now at this point, it's useful to define what we have. We obviously have a cubic transformation of a dodecahedron. So this then is basically a kilohexamix because the cubic transformation of a dodecahedron is called a hexamix. And that's what this is. This is a cubic transformation of this guy over here. So I'm going to continue my solve of this in cubic form, trying to keep my perspective about me. So this is all in. I've solved this, this, this. I put in all the ones that surround it. The next step is to put these in. Now, what's also helpful is to define the opposite side. The opposite side is this guy over here. So now that I've got the rest in, I need to place in anything that's not in this side. And that's this and this and that's and this. And I'm going to borrow that from whatever is up here. So what comes here is a corner that's white, red, and blue, which happens to be here. Now this one is easy to do because I can move this top with complete impunity and not worry about messing anything up. Turn, 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 and turn. So this is typical Mega Minx solve. Okay, this goes over here. I don't have a way of putting it in, but I can put this corner down here. Just bring it up, pop it down. Now I can take this, move it into here, bring it up, turn, pop it down. So now I have one more side left, which is this guy over here. Now, if any of you saw my video on how to solve a Mega Minx, Basically, you solve a Megaminx exactly the same way that I solve a 3x3. Three three. And I would solve a Kilominx the same way that I would solve a 2x2, two two, the same algorithm. So I'm going to do the same thing with this. So with the last layer, this is a corners-only puzzle because it's a two-layer puzzle. Just like this, no centers, no edges, all corners, five corners. Same thing with this. What I'm going to do is first put them in the proper place and see what's what. So this obviously belongs here. So this is correctly placed. 
this is not correctly placed because although you want this little wine glass here, this is yellow, this is white, so this has to be here. This is properly placed and this is not. So I've got two that are properly placed. Now the last layer of a cube, of a two by two, or even of a three by three, we do a corner rotational algorithm. So the corner rotational algorithm is where I do U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. And what generally that'll do is that'll hold the one that's to the right in place and move everything around. With a dodecahedron, I have to adapt that a little bit. What that's going to do is it's going to hold these two in place and move these guys around. And instead of doing U's, I have to do two U's. So here's how that's going to work. This is my side here, and this is going to be my F over here. My R is going to split through here, and my L is going to split through here. So as long as I keep that perspective, it's basically looking at these two. This is my up, and this is my F. This is my R, and this is my L. And if I do that algorithm, these guys will all flip around. And what that's going to be is 2U, R, 2U, Li, 2U, Ri, 2U, I, L. Doesn't touch any of these. Kept these two the same and rotates these guys all around. 2U, R, 2U, Li, 2U, Ri, 2U, I, L. Now I'll do that again, and that should get me back to my start position. Got a little lost there for a second because the movement's so bad. Anyway, I'm going to do the same thing here. So these two, even though this is rotated wrong, I'm going to keep these two here. Remembering my perspective, this is the front. That's going to be 2U, R, 2UI, LI, 2U, RI, 2UI, L. And as you can see, they're all in place. These guys are just rotated. The way that you rotate that is you just do RIDIRDs just like you would with the last step of any cube. So bearing in mind that this is my last side over here, this is going to be my RI over here, so we do RI, DI, R, D, RI, DI, R, D, not in place yet, so do it again, R, D, RI, DI, R, D. This is in place. So now we're going to move this in over here. And according to law of cubes, I should have to do the RIDARRD cycle just once to move this back in, and everything else will be magically solved. RIDIRD. And one more. RIDIRD. This is moved back, and you see the full shape of this puzzle finally revealing itself as a killer hexaminx. This is Ben's brilliant puzzle that he had, uh, he had designed for me. This is uh, three-dimensionally printed uh, from Shapeways. And it's a kilohexamix, which is the cubic transformation of this. And what I wanted to do was go over exactly how to solve a puzzle like this, which is a two-layered version of a megaminx in cubic form. So there you have it, the kilohexamix. Now, full disclosure. The solve of this puzzle was only training. Not so much training for the next higher order where you have to reduce um, edges and reduce centers and things like that. That's coming up. This is actually training to solve another kind of a puzzle. If you can have a cubic transformation of a kilominx to a kilohexaminx, they, then you can also take its distant cousin, which is the crystal pyraminx. Crystal pyraminx you know, is basically a kilominx. You've got Corner, you've got no centers. Corner, 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 corner. These are the corners of a kilominx. But now you've got these guys. These look like edges, right? Sure, they're edges because you've got a center here and a center here. But they're not megaminx type centers. Because what happens is that as you're turning this, 
you're dragging these um, edges with you. So you're dragging these with you over here. This is a crystal pyramid, so these have a very different kind of movement. These move more like the corners of a pyraminx than the edges of a megaminx. But the reason why I say that is if I can, if you can chop this down and turn it into this guy here, then you can chop down a crystal pyraminx to get this guy, a crystal hexaminx. So let's see if we can take the kilaminx solve and apply it to this guy. Now this this was three-dimensionally designed by Ben. Um, excellent puzzle. As you can see, it moves really, really nice. This really should be mass-produced at some point, too, if we're going to complete a series. But now we've got this. This is not three-dimensionally printed. This is modified. This is a mod. This is modded from this puzzle over here. Basically, he took this puzzle and turned it into this puzzle here. And what you've got is you've got the corners, which are the corners of a, a kilominx, here, 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 and here, just like these corners. These represent the wine glasses, so to speak. But now you've got these areas in between, and you've got a variety of different shapes of these little slices, here and here. So with that said, we'll go ahead and mix this up. Now, the movement is great. Obviously, this is what you'd expect from a tray from product. But I've always thought that the movement of a crystal pyraminx was a little clunky and not quite as stable. So there is a degree of instability with the movement here, but that's not Trafim's fault. That's actually a fault from the base puzzle. And despite the fact, despite the issues of stability of movement of the baseline puzzle, this holds up very well. Occasionally there's a pop, which is of course easily placed, but as long as you keep your, your position about you, you should be okay. And I'm just going to keep scrambling this up the rest of the way. Abracadabra.